Adrenal fatigue symptoms in women is the subject of today's video. So I hope that you're interested in the subject and that you are ready. Let's go. So guys, before, before we start, I want to apologize for my low energy today because I actually feel like I've been hit by a boss all of a sudden. Uh, James hasn't been feeling well all day and it's just hitting me now hopefully it's not you know what i hope it's just uh, not having enough sleep and uh, being poked with needles <laughs> since the early morning so hopefully it's just that now we're going to be going through adrenal um fatigue today and what are the symptoms in women what are the symptoms in general so without further with that further ado, the further to do, is that what is the expression? Let's do this. So first of all, if you're watching, uh, wherever you're watching, whether it is on Facebook or it is on YouTube, make sure you say hi, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know who's, who's watching. I was just actually chatting with Yulia. Let me know, Yulia, if you're here. I think Tracy was supposed to be here as well. So hopefully we have a good gang, uh, our usual gang and a little bit more, so make sure that you introduce yourself, leave me a like, leave me a comment, uh, so we can keep it a two-way conversation. Now, you probably already have seen what is on my first overlay. Sorry, I'm just out of breath today. <laughs> so you probably have seen what is on my first overlay, and, uh, and this is actually something that I want to start this life with, and uh, this is the fact that actually adrenal fatigue is not the syndrome recognized by science. Uh, so, um, unfortunately, we operate with this name, adrenal fatigue, adrenal fatigue, as it is something real, like it is uh, hypothyroidism or as it is PCOS, uh, but it hasn't been proven by science. Actually, if you scan this, this, this QR code, uh, it's going to take you to one of the um, one of the researchers. And if you ever uh, if you're ever um, reading scientific research, you can see actually that um, some of there are different types of uh, scientific researches, right? There is research that is made from the beginning and then there is um, a research that is like looking at different researches, right? So it's like a gathering of all the different ones. So actually this, this particular article is talking about how it was inconclusive, whether the adrenal fatigue is there, does it exist or does it not exist? But um, let's pause for a second. Tracy actually commented before, we were live that she was looking forward to this. Maria is here. Hi, Maria. How are you? Uh, Yulia is here. Yulia was just chatting on me on Instagram, by the way, guys. Uh, you always have my Instagram right here and my Facebook, so make sure you follow me there. Um, you can always chat with me and, um, and see my everyday life when I have a minute to breathe and, uh, and post a story. Um, so, yes. So, unfortunately, as I said, what I always um, compare adrenal fatigue is kind of breast implant illness, although breast implant illness, for example, starts to be um, acknowledged by doctors. Uh, but with adrenal fatigue, just like with breast implant illness, it wasn't tested very well for many, many years. Uh, however, there were a lot of patients that actually, um, you know, were struggling with symptoms. And I believe I'm one of those people who can say that they had adrenal fatigue. Now, what adrenal fatigue is, because it's not scientifically proven, we cannot say uh, what types of things happen in your body. But we are going to use the term adrenal fatigue for, however you want to name it, for me is a period of fatigue caused by previous stress. So whether it is that um, your cortisol lowers down or whether it is that um, you just go from fight and flight to rest and repair and all of a sudden you feel all the symptoms and all the damage that you have made during the time, time of um, during the time of this stress, right? It doesn't really matter which one it is. Uh, we're going to be talking about the symptoms that we people call adrenal fatigue. Uh, we have Beth here. Hello, Beth. How are you? How is the weather in England? Let us know. Uh, it's getting really hot in here and a little bit too hot, if I'm honest. As I said today, for, forgive me for my low energy, but I'm like out of breath. I'm tired. Hopefully it's not, you know, what, because I feel awful. Anyway, um, so yes. And again, why adrenal fatigue hasn't been recognized by science is that 
there were a lot of people who actually have been tested and have been, you know, had their blood drawn, whether it was uh, just a singular cortisol text, uh, test, for example, or whether it was uh, the cortisol test when they check the levels of your cortisol throughout the day, um, whether it was different, different blood tests, some Sir, some research hasn't been specific enough to say actually what is fatigue, what they, how they track that the, um, that the patients actually had fatigue, or actually they couldn't find any correlation with um, adrenal insufficiency. That is completely other syndrome as well, which actually shows that you have not enough production of cortisol and adrenaline. So as I said, we are going to call it adrenal fatigue. It's not said by science. I have to say it 15,000 um, 15, times. Uh, Beth is saying it was sunny earlier, but a little cloudy night. Now, whew, still pretty cool uh, in general, but getting lots of vitamin D. That's the most important vitamin D, guys. Super important. Um, I have to be careful not, not to overdo it and not to burn myself. Hopefully, all of you will be able to visit me on Tenerife soon. Um, is it just cortisol that is tested? Very often, because... That's the thing, no endocrinologist will test you for adrenal fatigue because it's not recognized by science. So they, if you are gonna go to endocrinologist and tell them, hey, I think I have adrenal fatigue, they're gonna laugh at you because for them is a thing that is just made up on the internet, right? Uh, but again, a lot of people say that they have these symptoms and I think that those symptoms are real, whether those are symptoms of adrenal burnout or just going through rest and repair after extreme period of using your adrenal glands, uh, this is something different. And I want to equate it very often to, you know, when you have a, people have car accidents, for example, and during the rush of adrenaline and cortisol, they don't feel pain and they can do crazy things. They get up and they stand up on their broken limbs. They lift the cars, you know, they have this super big rush of adrenaline and cortisol and they don't feel pain and they don't feel this damage. So for me, um, adrenal fatigue is almost when you can, your body cannot handle being in rest and in flight, fight and flight all the time. You have prolonged period of stress and your body either cannot produce cortisol um, or just has some mechanism that just puts you in rest and repair and all of a sudden you feel pains, aches, tiredness that we're gonna go through in a second that happened to you during the period of stress, if it makes sense, right? Let's let's equate period of stress to the accident and you know all the all the stuff that you can do is the, is still the accident, but whatever happens later is after the shock have fallen. Um, um, Tay K, sorry, I don't I, I don't know how to read that. I have tested cortisol twice. Once it was too little, and year later it was in the norm. It can happen because, of course, cortisol will vary. And let me know what type of cortisol test did you have? Did you have a speed test that is testing your cortisol throughout the day? Is it Dutch test? Um, I was supposed to check that. But there is this type of um, cortisol test. And there is another one where you only have your cortisol tested without food in the morning. So those are two completely different tests. And uh, how reliable they are is completely different thing. So um, what is fatigue? And this is something that is also very important to understand. Uh, fatigue is not tiredness. Uh, there is a difference between fatigue and tiredness. Again, it's very vague how it is being um, named by science. However, if we want to separate it ourselves to kind of understand the concept is that fatigue doesn't pass whenever you had sufficient amount of sleep and rest and it's overwhelming. So it actually influences your day-to-day -day life and stops you from functioning what you would perceive normal for yourself. Uh, so if you have prolonged period of tiredness, then it is fatigue uh, that doesn't go away with the periods of rest. Now, um, as you can see, we have adrenal fatigue and we have adrenal insufficiency. And I wanted to mention it because this is actually something that is recognized by science. And adrenal insufficiency is a, is a syndrome, is a problem. However, it has a little bit more and a little bit different symptoms that adrenal fatigue is told, said to have. So, of course, adrenal insufficiency is, um, has fatigue, has body aches, unexplained weight loss, low blood pressure, lightheadedness, loss of body hair, and skin um, discoloration. And some of those things are also being mentioned in all the adrenal fatigue things. However, for example, 
Um, usually, a loss of uh, weight loss is not um, is not mentioned uh, in um, uh, adrenal fatigue, but the digestive issues are. So maybe if it is con, you know, in conjunction with digestive issues that come up, then you know you might have, of course, unexplained uh, weight loss. Although here it says unexplained. I think if you have digestive issues, it will fall under explained ones. Uh, so body aches and so on and so forth. And if I can just break a little bit and say to you because i really think uh, very briefly my story if if i'm boring you you can skip to the next one if you're watching on the replay mm, uh, i believe that i had adrenal fatigue and if i am supposed to name it for myself and i'm going to be telling telling you which symptoms i had is that um my adrenal fatigue what i perceive to be adrenal fatigue happened after a period of very very intensive life so a lot of training a lot of dieting um a lot of stress very little sleep a lot of partying so also drinking alcohol back in the day my 20s don't judge me uh which is also stress for the body right so i had all these stressors and i was going what i thought very very well i thought that i had a lot of energy and i thought everything will be great i'm doing great because i am able to train even more and more uh, but I didn't know that at the time I was running on adrenaline. So quickly after that, I crashed. It was quite sudden. And I started to have some of those symptoms as well. So first of all, fatigue kicked in. So there was absolutely no possibility for me to, um, to work out. Uh, so that was the first thing that went out, out of the window. There was no possibility of, for me to um, go to work and then also socialize. Uh, I just didn't feel up for it at all. Uh, I was constantly tired. Um, and if I just go about those symptoms, I definitely had fatigue. I had body aches from what I remember. I had light headedness. So those are those three that I noticed having what I perceive adrenal fatigue. Now, if we go to this anecdotal adrenal fatigue symptoms, um, and this is also something that I had very much. So the first one is fatigue, especially when you wake up in the morning and you have intermittent crashes throughout the day. Many people actually say that the highest level of your cortisol in your body, not many people science, uh, should be in the morning when you wake up and it should be around 8 a.m., right? We have a typical fluctuation of our hormones and cortisol should be the highest in the morning. However, the whole problem with adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout, adrenal insufficiency, however you want to call it, is that in the morning you actually don't have that spike of cortisol that should push you out of bed, right? You don't have that spike of energy. And very typical, even though it says uh, crushes throughout the day, a very typical crush from what I, when I read into a little bit more, is around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So you wake up really, really tired. you kind of, how we're saying, running on the fumes, and then you really, really crush around 2, 3 p.m., uh, you have that very, you have difficulty with stress response and mood regulation, which means that everything is overwhelming for you. Um, everything that used to be normal and just, um, you know, require a little bit of alertness is overwhelming. Um, you have cognitive issues or brain fog, which is kind of connected to um, poor stress response as well. So it's almost like normal when you normally when you're stressed, you know, your adrenaline makes you think a little bit faster. However, if you have adrenal fatigue and your, you know, adrenaline or cortisol or both, sorry, are not being um, secreted as they should, secreted, extreme, secreted as they should, uh, you cannot think clearly. So you start having a blank in your mind. You know, brain fog is something almost like a cloud over your head where you know you should be thinking about something but you you can't you you just yeah it's a fog that's why it's called like a brain fog i feel slightly brain foggish today if i'm honest with you and out of breath um another one is increased energy levels in the evenings and especially um i have seen something that was called tired but wired and that described me for example very very well so I had the typical thing. I couldn't get up in the morning. Like I was dragging myself out of bed. And I'm not a morning person, but it's not 
it's not like that. If you think to yourself, okay, I'm not a morning person, that's it. That's not it. Um, it was almost, you know, when you're waking up in the middle of the winter after five hours of sleep, after running a marathon the day before. It's almost like that. I barely got myself out of bed and I have constantly lived in fear because I was living by myself then that I will oversleep for work. Um, but then in the evenings, you get a second wind, right? So you're tired in the morning. Uh, you have a really big crush about three. Then you have slight pickup around five or six and at 2 a.m. you're fully awake. You could go for a party, party, uh, party. Uh, so you lay in bed and you feel tiredness in your body because possibly you had the same thing happening the day before, so you couldn't sleep because you were laying in bed tired but wired. And uh, um, and you know you're tired. You you went to work, you know, you, you feel your body aching or, you know, you feel in your body that you're tired, but you cannot fall asleep. Your brain is going and... Yeah, and you are kind of wired, you're buzzing. I call it, I'm buzzing. Um, and it's almost very similar to an anxious state. It doesn't have to be, you might just have a lot of energy, but if it's quite extreme, you might become anxious as well, which also will fall under your poor uh, stress response and mood regulation. Now, when I had that happen, I used to work uh, for MAC Cosmetics, if you didn't know, I used to be a makeup artist, and I was a retail manager. And... Uh, um, I had people coming into my store and I also was responsible, you know, for everything that had to be done in store, including, you know, all the reports, everything. Um, and the job who norm that normally doesn't, you wouldn't think that it is so stressful, was so overwhelming for me that when I had a person approaching me and started to talking to me, I was panicking. Um, I was almost had an anxiety attack, which I couldn't understand, and I didn't understand why it was happening. Uh, so that was very interesting. Guys, I see your comments. I'm going to bring them up after I finish uh, these next two slides. So uh, another thing, of course, is going to be craving for salty and sweet foods. This, of course, can be connected to many different things. However, um, adrenal fatigue is very often uh, connected, at least, you know, with this anecdotal evidence. Uh, with deficiency in vitamin B1, which is very often also connected to cravings in the sugar, uh, for example, and salty foods, you know, also stress depletes your magnesium and stuff like that. So it might be depletion, but it also might be just general cravings. Then, of course, you overuse your caffeine and other stimulants because if you drag yourself out of bed, you tend to, you know, need a crouch. Crouch? God, I can't speak English today. You see, I have a brain fog myself. Um... And uh, so you need something to get you through the day. And it's kind of weird because you cannot drag yourself out of bed and you're super fatigued. And, and then within a few hours, you're so stressful. You're so stressed. You're so anxious that you cannot handle anything. Um, and you actually might end up taking some sort of, I, I used to take uh, like a herbal calming thing, like Valeriana, you know, like a herbal calming thing because I was going out for lunch and I thought I'm not going to be able to come back to work. That's how, that's how anxious um, I was. And, and literally I had thoughts of, I will not be able to survive days day at work. And it didn't seem logical to me, but that's just how I felt. So another thing is compromised immune system. And of course, um, this is, you know, very typical. And this is also connected, you know, to stress and then going off stress. Um, that our immune system is getting a little bit um, lower, which might mean that you are catching infections much easier. And that, again, and that was something that happened to me. I noticed that in general, uh, for me, and let me know if you do too, that after um, being stressed, I very often get sick on holidays. Um, maybe it's my mini adrenal fatigue. <laughs> I don't know, but it seems like, yeah, my body is going to rest and repair from fight and flight. Um, and just, you know, all my <sighs> adrenaline is not protecting me anymore as it should. Uh, so take eight saying that she had a blood test, single blood test. I had it too. And uh, I had two blood tests uh, within the same time period and they showed very different results. Um, that's why I think it's so important to have the one that is testing uh, your cortisol throughout the day. Uh, because then you can see where it spikes and when it drops, it might be, you know, it, it doesn't have to be consistent. Um, 
I think that mine was slightly lower, but it was like on the bottom of the norm. Uh, but that was already when I was working actively, I think for one and a half or two months to make my situation better. Uh, but um, yeah, um, it, I would definitely recommend doing, you know, the daily one. Now, Beth is saying, I had the symptoms when I was traveling an hour to work and from work before PCOS diagnosis. Uh, it could be both. Uh, don't forget that also all the um, things that are happening in our body, all the inflammation, all the you know negative things that are happening or things that shouldn't be happening in our body. If you have any syndrome, any disease and stuff like that, it is a stress for, on your body very often. And uh, two days ago, I was ovulating with PCOS and I don't know what happened, but it was so painful. Um, I don't think I have a cyst. I don't know. Um, in the middle of making my uh, checkup, so maybe I will find out soon. Uh, but I had horrible ovulation pain. And on this day, you know, your body knows that something is wrong. You're going to be more exhausted, not just because you feel pain, but you might have inflammation and uh, there might be systems in place that, you know, raise your blood pressure to try to fix whatever wrong is happening in your body. Um, so at the start, I was okay and very good at my job. Then my mental stability, my moods and ability to focus and, um, and copy, cope. With added cope without added pressures gradually declined. Literally, me, um, I had that, and I tend to get that. And I want to say that if you have ever been through something like this, um, don't judge yourself too harshly. Because my problem is I don't feel when it's coming. Uh, me running on adrenaline versus me being happy and healthy is not very different. So I don't always get the memo uh, from my body that I'm overdoing it. Sometimes I am, but when you are running on adrenaline, uh, you probably know that it's very hard to stop. It is very addictive. So for example, now I am uh, I'm a business owner, you know, I'm a begin you know, starting pretty much, still pretty early in business. And I do anything to make this business successful. Um, and it's very hard to stop and recover because you think, you know, you're doing something that you want. Um, so even though you don't want to push yourself, you don't believe that what I, I don't believe sometimes that what I'm doing at the minute is going to result in, in, in chronic fatigue because I don't feel it at the minute, if you know what I mean. So it's very easy to actually skip that and not to see that it's happening. Um, I'm not sure if I would say adrenal fatigue exactly, but I was, but was in fight or flight for too long. Exactly, because I think that what we describe as adrenal fatigue, which Beth uh, really well mentioned, is is not a syndrome. It's not attached to specific tests, uh, but it does happen in those circumstances. So whether we just decide to use adrenal fatigue, insufficiency, um, adrenal crash. Um, stress crash or whatever, maybe we will make our own name, um, has those symptoms. So many people say that they do have these symptoms, whether they are attached to any scientific uh, things or not. Many people react like that for prolonged periods of stress. Now, let's go further. So there are another um, symptoms that actually have been attached also to adrenal fatigue. However, not everybody is... Uh, experiencing them. God, I'm out of breath today. Whew. Whew. No, so uh, insomnia is one of them. And as I said, some people just feel tired, but wired and have a little bit difficulty sleeping. And I'm a really good sleeper naturally. So that was me. So I had difficulty falling asleep. And yes, at the very beginning, I was waking up in the middle of the night because that's also very common that you lay in bed, you feel tired, but wired, maybe you fall asleep, but then you wake up around 4 or 5 a.m., uh, very, very awake. And then when you eventually manage to fall asleep, right, after around 7, 8, you just cannot get up uh, from bed. Uh, but some people struggle, you know, if, if they have a little even stronger uh, problem, they struggle with insomnia overall, which, of course, uh, it's even more exhausting and even more mentally draining. Another thing is frequent urination and that again is very commonly um, uh, connected to stress as well. Loss of muscle tone, uh, poor circulation and loss of muscle tone I actually want to mention because um, I also kind of connect that to insulin resistance, not necessarily straightforward, but because 
I remember when I was insulin resistant um, and I had that problem that even though I was working out a lot, I felt, you know, I, I put myself to this exhaustion state as well. Um, it almost was like my energy was not going to my cells, right? Because that's what insulin resistance is. But if you want to build a cell, the cell needs energy and it needs protein and it needs everything that it needs to grow. And so for me, it felt like even though I was working out more, I was actually losing muscle. Uh, whether it was true or not, I don't know, because it was also being covered by layers and layers of, of fat, even though I was eating one and a half thousand calories, but uh, it could be it. Now, another thing is poor circulation. So it would be, again, uh, similar to what we had describing as, um, you know, adrenal insufficiency. Uh, so that was low blood pressure, for example. So if you measure it, um, you know, if you have something like 90 over 60, that is very low blood pressure. I had it naturally as well, so it's good to know your baseline. Uh, some people have very naturally low blood pressure. Uh, now, let's let's take a break, by the way. I see that a few people are watching. Make sure you say hi. Tell me who's watching. I want to know uh, who's watching me today um, and where are you watching from. So another thing is depression uh, because, of course, as in um, all the diseases that are connected to fatigue, uh, depression is very, very prevalent. Um, you know, lack of energy. Um, I don't want to say that it can cause depression, but it definitely can influence your moods. So in both ways, both anxiety, if you have high ad ad adrenaline, but if you burn yourself out completely of adrenaline, then you don't feel anything. So it's very easily slip, slip, in, slip in depression. Heather is watching us. Hello, Heather, how are you? Um, so yeah. Another thing is you can see, you know, adrenal fatigue is actually a weight gain. Um, decreased libido, which again is very often um, connected to both, you know, depression, anxiety, so with high um, adrenaline levels as well, uh, because you, yeah, your body is just not right, right? If, if your body is not fully right, the first thing that goes is your fertility, because it, it is kind of a function that your body can get rid of. Uh, and digestion issues. And that again is something that I notice a lot whether it is during stress periods. Uh, this is also almost my barometer, I, I'll be honest. If I see that my stomach is getting really bad, I know that somewhere is a problem. Either I was just, you know, yellowing it, anything, anything I wanted, anything, a lot of bad stuff, or uh, it is stress. And stress literally makes uh, holes in my gut. I'm always saying that, and it has done right now as well. So, uh, Yulia is saying, I have what you mentioned before. I used to live in a collective with two other girls, and they love to start drama fights. I felt in the end that my body started shaking and like um, like almost nerve wracking. Um, I know how living situation can uh, influence um, your mental state and your adrenal fatigue. I've been there. Um, I um, I'll tell you a story at the end. I want to finish it with, to talk about adrenal fatigue before I tell you any of my stories. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, digestion issues are always are also uh, connected to adrenal fatigue. Now, um, those are a few things that I don't want to go in depth uh, in. So if you want me to make a separate video about this, let me know. Um, those are some things that you can do that I found um, that can mitigate adrenal fatigue. So vitamin C, magnesium, B vitamins for sure. Coenzyme Q Q10, I found it. I didn't read why, if I'm honest. And all the um, adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, rhodiola, probably shisandra as well, licorice root, etc., etc. Very important overall in the periods of stress especially is always to take vitamins, especially vitamin B1, because um, apparently it's very easily, uh, you know, depleted in our body. And very often uh, even caffeine is further depleting it. Uh, and also magnesium also is depleted by both stress and, um, and caffeine. So it's very important to uh, focus on those two. Vitamin C, of course, we all know is very important for your health. So make sure you take that too. Now, if I can briefly say, let's just go through the last one. What just happened here? Okay, it's the same. So if I can just add to this list a few um, things with a lifestyle. Uh, you can hack it. <laughs> you can hack 
um, your adrenal fatigue. So if you're struggling with fatigue, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be adrenal fatigue because I went through two things. So I just want to make sure that you understand it, that after a um, period of stress, for example, it is natural, for example, for your thyroid function uh, to be lower. But thyroid feels a little bit different. Um, thyroid fatigue feels a little bit different than adrenal fatigue. I've been through both, uh, so I can possibly compare them. What I would notice that um, thyroid connected fatigue uh, very often is a con you know connected to actually sleeping a lot. So you don't have insomnia. Is the opposite. You sleep a lot. You can sleep sixteen hours, twenty hours. There is not enough sleep in this in the day. Uh, second thing is that you feel cold all the time. You also feel lightheaded and out of breath. You also have brain fog, horrible brain fog with thyroid. Uh, however, the coldness and the actual possibility to sleep. So you never feel wired, uh, more depression than anxiety as well. Um, and let me think, I was just thinking about one more thing and swelling. Like you also have weight gain, but you're, you're you you're more swollen um it's more swelling than fat so for example i noticed for myself that my face was very swollen my eyelids were very very swollen when i was waking up possibly also because i was sleeping 16 18 hours a day um but yeah so again adrenal fatigue insomnia um, difficulty falling asleep um thyroid constantly feeling tired also, thyroid is feeling cold all the time. Adrenal fatigue doesn't have that. And uh, yeah, feeling shaky is in both ways. However, adrenal fatigue, for example, has a low breath, blood pressure. I don't think it's a symptom, for example, for uh, thyroid. So that is also very important that your fatigue can be coming from many different things. It can be coming from different hormone imbalances. However, what I would like urge you to think, if I can urge anybody to think anything, uh, is that... Um, your adrenal fatigue usually happens after a period of stress, whether it is physical, you know, you had surgery, whether it is prolonged mental stress, like Julia just mentioned, um, or whether it is, uh, you know, acute, uh, you know, something horrible that happened that made you uh, stressed a lot. Um, so before I tell you my uh, private stories, uh, I will, um, I would like to invite you to my group. Again, we're starting to have a little bit more people in the group, so I will start to be a little bit more active during the next couple of weeks there uh, and to create some uh, group-specific content. So you can scan this QR code and it's going to take you to group. <clears throat> I'm also going to put it in the description. I don't think I put it in the description today. Um, forgive me, I was in, uh, in blood tests and all of that, uh, and I just... I have a brain fog, guys, and I, I don't feel very well. Uh, so, yeah. So if I can now um, tell you a little bit um, of my story, Julia, with and how that influenced my health. I don't know. If, you, if you're bored with me saying that, just tell me. Uh, I'm not going to say stories anymore. Uh, but when I was living in uh, Berlin, I moved to Berlin uh, with my ex, um, which didn't go very well. So, of course, this was a very stressful situation for me. And then, unfortunately, um, he had to, for different reasons, uh, leave Berlin. Uh, so I was left in a place, in a new place, with no language, alone, um, in struggling relationship, in the job that I really didn't like and that was actually very high stress. Um, and after that, actually, um, that influenced my health a lot, but that actually made my thyroid go. Uh, I don't know now whether it went just, you know, it would be periodically, you know, because it went kind of, I was diagnosed with thyroid problems around eight months later, maybe. Uh, but I don't know if it was just slowly going down because some people are saying that after a period of stress it's natural for your thyroid to be uh, a little bit worse and it, that it could re recover. I don't know. I was put on pills. I take pills to this day. Mm. Second time um, that it happened, I told you, uh, was uh, a very stressful work situation at the time, uh, overtraining um, and um, yeah, overdoing it overall. And I do have periods when I tend to run myself to some sort of fatigue, I don't know, adrenal fatigue or other. Um, but it's almost like for a few months I am super energetic and I'm doing the most. Uh, you know, very often it's not, you know, something that I choose to do, but I have to do to survive <laughs> and make money. 
Um, and then I am in bed for three months. Uh, I'm very happy at the minute to work from home. Uh, so even if I'm fatigued, at least, you know, if I need to take a nap, I can, and I can take a little extra rest. Um, however, I didn't need to for the last few months. And another thing, guys, I was really close to being completely burned out. Yeah, it's almost like a burnout, by the way, uh, adrenal fatigue. Um, I was really, really close to it again, because uh, a couple of months ago, if you will come back to my videos, when I was, uh, I actually did live about the best exercise for PCOS and a uh, few more and i was very very pale and i was leaving the other apartment guys living in malls for three months uh, it was shocking um i definitely do not oh julia is saying it's not boring at all listening to my stories guys if i say can if i can do anything i can talk and um, so yeah living in um, all the apartments uh, fighting with the owner um who whose answer to mold was just open the windows of course it didn't help because it was rainy and cold outside uh calls for tenerife which is like 13 degrees mm, uh, and uh yeah it it was horrible and and being in a bad situation um if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about julia's comment being in a bad living situation uh takes a toll because you never rest uh and if you are in a place where you cannot rest uh it will take a toll and another thing that i want to mention to you guys if you suspect that you have adrenal fatigue um Sorry, I'm gonna re readjust. If you suspect that you have adrenal fatigue, um, yes, you can reach out to your doctor, uh, but what you should do, um, start forcing yourself to rest. Even if you are anxious, um, even if you want to move um, and really, I don't know, you're anxious so you want to go to the party, don't do it. Um, try to find something else instead. What I find uh, catches my attention and keeps me still is a lot of reality TV. I know it's my guilty pleasure, but reality TV actually is something that is not stimulating my brain. I'm a horrible geek, so normally I learn something all the time. Uh, whether it is, I don't know, I'm, I'm down the rabbit hole of cryptocurrency recently, for some reason it's fascinating for me or health stuff, or um, ast astronomy, not astrology, yeah, astronomy, you know, SpaceX and all this kind of stuff. But when I feel really, really bad, I make sure that I play something super stupid and that, you know, is, is something that makes my, I know that it's gonna not stimulate my brain, so it makes my brain switch off. It might be silly, but it works. Uh, cat videos on reels, you know, always help. Uh, so force yourself, find something that will make you sit still and not stress you out. So maybe read a good book, <coughs> but hopefully not a book that is a horror. Um, and stay still. Take a long walks, uh, slow walks uh, outside. Walking outside, I mentioned it many times before, especially looking afar and not being in four walls. Automatically, your body knows to start lowering your cortisol levels. If you can, uh, you know, combine it with grounding, do that. Um, so we all know that, for example, everybody loves lying on the beach, touching the sand, swimming in the ocean and being in the sun, right? And what do we have there? Why, why are we so relaxed on the beach? We're touching the ground, right? So it's, a, it's some, some sort of, I don't, I don't know if I believe in all of those ions, but I do believe that, you know, being in contact with nature helps. So touching the ground, Swimming in the ocean also gives you a lot of um, a lot of what my micro not micronutrients you know magnesium all the minerals go through your skin. Contacting nature, looking afar, sunshine. So if you ever think to yourself, what am I supposed to do to feel better? Try to emulate beach in the most in the best way you can. Whether it is walking barefoot on the grass, uh, sitting out in the park, being in the sunshine walking outside, looking afar, being nature, nature automatically relaxes us, guys. We are animals. I, I know that some people might not agree with me, but I believe in evolution. Uh, evolutionary, we are animals and we are part of animal kingdom. I'm not trying to do a fair, say, you know, any fair, fairy things here, uh, but it's been proven by science that us being in natural surroundings distresses us. Uh, and then you should start seeing progressively better sleep, especially if you're out in the fresh air a little bit more. Of course, unplug for the screens as much as you can. Everything that is stimulating you, you should minimize. You should, of course, cut out the toxic people, find a safe place, 
and start sleeping more and more and more and more. Don't feel guilty about sleeping too much. Don't feel guilty about saying no to people for months on end and just watching reality TV, reality TV and sleeping. This is what got me through my adrenal fatigue. I literally was started sleeping around 10, 11 hours for three months straight. And make sure that you cut out all the stimulants. Uh, you cut out alcohol, even though you're anxious and you might find it as a patch for anxiety, cut it out. It also stresses your body. Uh, if you want to chill down, it's better to take like a herbal calming stuff like, a, you know, sleepy tea or valerian root and stuff like that. If you want to make yourself sleep um, and try to chill. This is going to be my last, uh, my, my, my last word. So slowly, slowly get yourself to sleep more. And as soon as you will be able, you will improve enough that you will be able to sleep. Your recovery is going to be much, uh, much uh, quicker. And I talked about it many times before uh, that sleep is the most powerful thing in the world. Uh, today, my boyfriend James is not feeling very well, sleeping all day. Perfect strategy. Probably he's going to wake up tomorrow feeling like a young god. Uh, by the way, he also likes he also likes drawing, draw, putting himself to adrenal fatigue, guys. I'm working on I'm working on giving him vitamins and healthy foods. Uh, so Heather is saying it's a good strategy. Uh, thank you, Heather. Uh, I follow Heather on Instagram as well. Uh, we we keep, keep in touch. Uh, guys, let me know if you have any comments. Uh, if any of those symptoms, let me put them quickly back on the screen. If any of those symptoms are applied to you or if they ever apply to you, do you think that you struggle with this, whether we call it adrenal fatigue, whether we call it adrenal burnout, um, whether we call it just, you know, stress crush? Uh, do you suffer from any of these? And if you ever uh, had to fight them, and if you did, which way? <laughs> James can learn a lot from you. I know he can, but he's a stubborn man. So, you know, teaching him slowly, this stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make him to watch this live, actually. He was helping me produce some uh, for a little bit, uh, but uh, I don't need him so he can have enough. <laughs> and I love talking to you guys as well. By the way, um, I'm going to be finishing right now. Uh, but uh, this is one of the things that I do, by the way, as my as my job, guys. I, do, I create live streams and live shows. So if you ever need a live show, if you ever have Instagram that you need help with, uh, give me a shout. I'll do what I can to help you. And my ladies, I'm very happy that you tuned in today. Again, forgive me for my low energy. I'm just super out of breath today, super tired. I think we either caught something hopefully not, you know what, or maybe we're starting to struggle with adrenal fatigue ourselves because we have been very much overworked recently. So uh, for sure, got all. Mm. Well, as you say, being nature helps a lot. Yeah. And the problem that I see very often is that we feel guilty doing it. We feel guilty prioritizing ourselves uh, over anything else. Uh, we think that we're going to lose out on something if we're doing something stupid as being in nature or if we say no to our stressful family dinner uh, and we're just going to do nothing. Um, this is the time for next few months, guys, to not feel guilty and to learn not feeling guilty by doing nothing. It is so difficult. Um, and I find the biggest struggle in those moments to not feel uh, guilty for resting. Um, but try and you will, fee you will see that it, uh, it will pay off. Now, let me uh, remove some of those overlays and we're going to say our final goodbyes unless you want to say something last. So again, uh, also, if you're watching on replay, make sure that you give me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I love watching those comments also later on. Make sure you click a like button. That helps my channel a lot. Make sure you leave a comment. Uh, I am going to be publishing another poll, uh, giving you two options of which videos I'm going to be doing next. Make sure you also follow my group and my Instagram. I'm posting. I'm starting maybe to be more consistent, consistent there. Uh, in the stories, but I post two times a week as well. So make sure you follow me on those social media and I will see you next week. See you. Bye. <laughs>